Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to this full clear of the Horrific Vision of Orgrimmar with 5 masks active. This was done back with a rank 10 cloak, so 50% sanity resist. It's a lot easier once you start getting that up to 65 or higher uh, with the future rank cloaks, but... Uh, so I did this as a Blood Death Knight. Blood Death Knight, pretty good for this with an enough Twilight Devastation corruption. The first thing I always do in this vision is check the hut here. Uh, so you see I quickly am mousing over this vial of mysterious red liquid. Whatever vial is in that hut is always the bad vial. That's the one that drains your sanity. And then based on which one that is, that guarantees that a certain other color is the good one. Uh, and so I know, for instance, that since the red one is bad, I know that the blue one is always good uh, for this run. So I'm looking for any of the blue ones because the blue ones are going to restore sanity. And the other ones are all the buffs. The buffs are less important uh, than the sanity restore ones, so I usually don't go that far out of my way. And you'll see here, I'm actually in some serious danger of dying here. I'm doing 63k HPS. I've pulled quite a lot here. The benefit of playing a um, playing a tank is that you can actually pull that big and live on five masks. Uh, if you're playing a DPS spec, you probably want to split this up into fewer pulls. But since you're playing a tank, you're doing less damage, uh, so you need to pull this big to be able to time the, the event. Uh, so you'll see there, I killed the blacksmith inside that hut. The blacksmith isn't always there inside the blacksmithing hut, uh, but if he is, it's very worthwhile to kill him as one of the first things you do, uh, because he gives you plus 10% damage for the rest of the run, and that's a lot. So uh, I always check that hut. If he's not there, it does mean that Gammon is up in one of the other buildings, but Gammon just gives you defensive bonuses, uh, not offensive ones, uh, so I don't usually bother with that in quite the same way. I'll, I'll always go for the blacksmith, though. Uh, then the, the first area that I decide to do is I loop through the middle here, and then I go over towards the drag. Uh, this is because it lets me just attack this this first guy here. Um, I, I'll eat my kebab here. So kebab is food that restores 100 sanity. It's good to eat this when you're losing as little sanity as possible. So I eat it before I go into the areas where I start draining more sanity. Uh, and you'll see the sanity restore comes in just in time before that figment spawns. Uh, it's good to eat your kebabs when you're above 50% sanity, so that no figments can spawn and, and attack you. Uh, so see now, we're attacking this um, this guy here. For some reason, my Cyclotronic Blast bugged out on this pull, and I couldn't click it for, for like at all. Uh, and that was really, really annoying, because I, I want to kill this thing as fast as possible. This guy's actually really dangerous. Um, in this area as well, I have two active madnesses that are both pretty annoying. Uh, there's one where the bugs show up on your screen, and you have to jump to make them not active on your screen anymore. And the other is where you jump and leave that fire puddle beneath you. That's actually the most dangerous of the like of the madnesses that are active in this area. It's that that one where you jump and leave the fire puddle underneath you. Uh, here you'll see I've procked my gift to the titans. Gift of the titans is a very powerful research on the tech tree. Also I think very important before you start trying to do five mask full clears. Uh, and really honestly even for just regular full clears, gift of the titans is just so big. Uh, it's you, you stop draining sanity and you get a huge haste and move speed buff. Uh, so you'll see I use that Gift of the Titans to do a pull over here, uh, and now I'm going to go check in on Garona. For some reason that appendage didn't pull, so that must have been why my Psychotronic Blast was bugged and everything, is because there was like an evading mob. Uh, I checked this little hut there. The Transmog hut there sometimes has a interactable item in it. Uh, if it doesn't have an interactable item in it, then that means that there is an enemy that gives a buff in the other corrupted area, so over in the, the Valley of Spirits. Uh, but... That's later in the run, so it's a little bit less good. So it's it's a better outcome for it to be in the first corrupted area you check. Uh, anyways, if there's an item in that transmog hut, you can interact with it, uh, and then you'll fight a mini boss that gives you 10% crit for the rest of the run, uh, and that's very much worth your while to, to kill. Uh, now this area is all about, you'll see I'm, I'm actually, I clicked on the, the blue vial there to restore some sanity, because I know that the blue vial is good. I'm not bothering with any of the buff vials. <laughs> there, there's, there's a little play where you death grip into your Twilight Devastation beam to kill something. That's a, that's a great thing that you can do as a Death Knight with that corruption. Uh, you'll see my Twilight Devastation just absolutely trucking. So, yeah, I, I don't really bother with the buff vials. I don't bother with the all the ones that aren't the one that I know to be the Sanity Restore vial. And I go out of my way, though, to, to check and make sure that I am getting all the Sanity Restore vials that I can. Uh, you'll see here we're running out of Sanity fairly quickly. Uh, it's probably going to be time to use a an orb soon. Always have to be careful when you're this low on sanity that you don't have a figment spawn on you uh, at a bad time. You'll see I've got a figment, in fact, spawned right now, uh, and just 14 seconds left before I run out of sanity. I have a little weak aura. If you're interested in weak auras, I have some, I'll have some good ones in the description for this video, uh, so you can check that. I proc my Gift of the Titans, so I'm just going to pull instantly into my orb. Even if I hadn't proc Gift of the Titans here, I would still want to pull instantly into the orb. And I'm saving my Cyclotronic Blast for when the boss shields itself here. 
Uh, for Void Torrent, you can actually just get right under the boss, and sometimes if you can get right into the middle of the hitbox, it won't affect you. However, because we orbed into this boss, it's not going to hurt our sanity at all. One drawback, though, of orbing here is that uh, when you orb into a mini-boss, it makes the Elite Extermination sanity that you get afterwards a little bit less efficient. Uh, but I still generally will like... I like orbing into that guy, because that guy uh, can be pretty, pretty deadly, and it's always nice when there's guaranteed sanity loss uh, or dodgeable sanity loss to just take it in an orb, because then it won't actually cause you to lose sanity, right? Because uh, orbs restore more sanity than you actually need. Okay, so we're going now uh, to Rexar's area, the Valley of Honor. This area can be very deadly. Uh, Rexar itself is probably the, the biggest challenge when you're playing solo, because there are a lot of interrupts on that fight. Uh, so you need something that has quite a lot of mob control, or otherwise you want to save all your offensive cooldowns for that fight. Uh, here's Misha. Misha, you just want to stand out of the green puddles and stand away from it when it casts the roar, uh, or else you'll lose a fairly large amount of sanity. The split personality and uh, the little... I forgot what that one's called. The one where the little fear circle spawns are the two active madnesses in this area this week uh, at the time of recording this, but uh, those madnesses will cycle. There are three different possible madnesses for each type of zone, uh, and you may get a different set. You, you, there, there are different sets active each week. Uh, so now I'm doing a little skip here. This skip is dangerous because you lose a lot of health while you're outside of the out of bounds of the zone. Uh, you'll see my health going down quite a lot here. Uh, and I use my vamp blood, which is actually kind of stupid because <laughs> uh, the damage scales with your health, so that doesn't really help. But uh, you'll see we get here, and there's actually a couple of vials of blue liquid. Uh, vamp blood runs out, and I go down to 1 HP, as a tradition. Uh, and we'll actually just eat a kebab here. Kebab restoring some health, and it'll restore a little bit of sanity. As your cloak gets better and better, those kebabs are going to become more and more efficient. Uh, you'll see we're just waiting on that Sanity Restore tick before we get out of that circle. Uh, and there's some more Sanity Restoring Vial here. Uh, but I'm fairly low on health, so I'm actually going to pull this Trash Pack before attempting Rexar. If you don't want to do that skip, you can do this entire area. It's not that bad, but it, it's fairly annoying, so I, I like pulling these things instead. Uh, you'll see, though, does a lot of damage. On 5 Masks, everything does 125% increased damage and health. Uh, so you can actually die to stuff. Try not to do that, that's bad. Um... <laughs> You're welcome for that insight. This pack is actually pretty annoying because of the, the stuns. The way that the stuns work in this area is there's a poison that stacks up to five and then it stuns you uh, when you reach that fifth stack. Uh, so you do have to be careful of that. You'll see I have things from Beyond Chasing Me. Blood Death Knight can actually play fairly high corruption. It's not that bad because you have a lot of different tools for dealing with things from Beyond and you have Death Strikes if they do connect with you. All right, so this is the hard part now, Rexar. Rexar has these boars that he'll summon in. Uh, they'll knock you back a little bit when they spawn. Uh, and then they will also just attack, they'll do a bunch of sanity damage to you on their Void Quills cast. Uh, so my first priority here is just killing these boars as fast as possible. You see 75% sanity lost uh, on that one there. Uh, this one, I'm going to, you wait until just the end of its kick, uh, its cast, and then you can interrupt it. I have uh, Death Grip, Mass Grip, Interrupt, uh, Stun, and, oh, I brought Gift of the Titans, so I'm actually going to be okay now. Now that I have Gift of the Titans popped, I don't even have to worry about anything because Gift of the Titans makes you immune to sanity loss. If, if I hadn't brought Gift of the Titans there, uh, I would have I would have maybe slid enough tools here to, to get through this fight, uh, but it would have been very close, and I may have used my cheat death there. Um, but since that didn't happen, we were okay. We got out of there with our cheat death intact. Uh, Gift of the Titans is on this like ICD where it, it won't proc back to back. So if you proc your Gift of the Titans right before pulling Rexar, you may want to wait a bit uh, if you can, and then pull some other trash or something. Uh, like you can pull the Elite that's down the ramp from him uh, and restore some sanity with Elite Extermination. Uh, and then you're kind, of, you're kind of just waiting for that ICD to come off so that you can get a gift proc there. This figment actually spawns quite a lot when you use the totem uh, to get back to the starting area. All the areas in Orgrimmar have a totem after you kill the after you finish the area uh, that you can use to get back to that bale of hay. Uh, but that figment, if it spawns in that bale, will bug out if you actually run too far away from it. It'll get into like a an evade spot where it's pretty hard to get to, or it, where it won't run to you. <clears throat> so uh, it's good to just stay there and, and finish it off. Uh, now we're going to the next. The next uh, area, this is the Corrupted area. Uh, so again, we have the Jumping and the, the Fire Puddle Madnesses. Uh, and this mini boss here, not too much of a problem. Uh, you do have to watch out for the Decimator Orb there. So he'll shoot out an orb, uh, and then if it, it'll re return to him and drain a huge amount of sanity if it hits you. Uh, with five masks active, you're taking 400% increased sanity uh, from any, any boss abilities or whatever, mob abilities that hit you. So uh, you do want to avoid that if possible. Uh, now this is, I decide, I decide to go to this lost area first. I usually like going here before doing the, the actual Valley of Spirits. Uh, Kathir Dominator, this is a very scary mob. This one does the Touch of the Abyss cast here. Uh, that is a must interrupt or else you'll get stunned. If you are doing these runs, it's a good idea to bring 
uh, Drainic Living Action potions to get out of those stuns in case they do affect you. Uh, but you can also, some, some classes have abilities to, you, you know, immune out of it. I could use Icebound Fortitude, for instance, on this Death Knight. Uh, but you'll see, I'm kind of running a little low on sanity here. I'm kind of fishing for Gift of the Titans proc. Uh, if I can proc Gift of the Titans, I'll go and just try and murder the mini boss. Otherwise, I'll use a Sanity Restore or before pulling him. Uh, because the mini boss that's at the top of this little hill here does guaranteed Sanity Drain. Uh, you'll see, running into some problems here. I'm actually in a little bit of danger of dying, and I'm also running back. Th those Void Zone puddles that I'm leaving behind me are actually causing me to lose some sanity. You'll see him standing in it there. Uh, and very low on sanity. And this is actually where my cheat death gets claimed. They're, they're, they're a little 15 sanity tick, uh, and I'm down to my cheat death gone. Still have two orbs, but now that room for error is out of the picture. But because I was able to kill Rexar without needing my cheat death, uh, there's not really anything anywhere else that you kind of need your cheat death. In Orgrimmar, it's Rexar that I would try to have your cheat death for when you pull it. Uh, and in Stormwind, it's Magister Umbric, which uh, I'll make a Stormwind video that'll come out for the next time Stormwind will be active, uh, with a full clear that I did on a different class even. I, I did that on a, as a Windwalker. Uh, so you guys can check that out too and see see how I handled those mechanics. Uh, so, okay. There's Gift of the Titans proc. Gift of the Titans proccing. Very nice. Th this, this is a boss mob that... It's a little bit less important to have Gift of the Titans for because all of the sanity loss on this fight is avoidable. Uh, but with that split personality madness, sometimes it can be really awkward. Uh, sometimes you get in this situation where you're obligated to dodge and you're, you're spawning those images around you soon. Uh, and that can be a really tough spot. You can, you can very easily lose runs to that. That's one of the most popular, one of the most common ways to, to die in these things. Uh, so now I know I don't have Gift of the Titans and I won't have it for a little while here. I stun this appendage so that it won't you know teleport away. Uh, and then I fight a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, those appendages, basically the way they work is if you're not in melee with them, they'll just burrow under the ground at you. Uh, but yeah, this is the this is the boss mob that does unavoidable sanity loss uh, through his punishing throw. Uh, so you want to kill it as fast as possible. You'll see I'm using Cyclotronic Blast on it. And this is part of the reason that I'm playing Cyclotronic Blast and um, Crucible Flame. It's just so that I have more offense uh, for single target. Because single target, especially as a tank spec, is really going to be the area where you're lacking. Uh, and so you want to you want to optimize that as much as you can. I'm playing all the single targety stuff that I can, except for Twilight Devastation, which is just too good an AOE to pass up. Uh, okay, so mini boss down. Uh, we're now almost at 100% enemy forces or whatever in this valley. Uh, the pack that I choose to skip is the one with two Kathir Dominators. It's actually not the end of the world to pull that pack. You could skip an Appendage pack as well if you wanted to, uh, but I like skipping the Double Dominator pack. Uh, you'll see we proc our Gift of the Titans there. Not the best time to proc Gift of the Titans, but uh, I suppose not the worst. And I think it would be safe here to still just use my orb before pulling this guy, but I'm not going to do it. All right, this is this was a bold pull. Um, I, I have two orbs left, and that is, that is quite a lot of orbs. I probably don't need to uh, be so aggressive here with saving an orb, uh, and I could get into a lot of trouble here depending on what combination of, like, if I if I have trouble dodging uh, these abilities. But yeah, basically the, the strategy for this guy is to get right under his hitbox uh, so that you can dodge the Ring of Chaos, uh, and you can always drag the boss a little bit to bring it away from the, the worst of the Void Zones. Uh, you know, you're, you're always leaving Void Zones underneath yourself, there's not a way to avoid that, but you can drag him away from the Defiled Ground Void Zones uh, that he creates, uh, and then get him into a better spot. Uh, again, this is all about just careful movement. If you're, if you're constantly moving, you're going to cause yourself a lot more problems with those, uh, the, the puddles that you're dropping underneath your feet. So try not to constantly move, try to move in a co controlled fashion, uh, and stand still as much as you can, because then you'll, you'll have more options when you do have to move. Uh, so that's that, that valley done. Now we're going into the Valley of Spirits. You can see Bwemba is active over there, so she's the person that's active. It's either her or the Transmog Hut is active. She gives a haste buff, or the Transmog Hut gives a crit buff. Uh, either one are very much worth killing uh, if you reach them early in your run. The later it gets in the run, the, the less necessary it is to do that. Um, but it can still be useful because it does make Thrall easier. Uh, and especially if you're fighting these before Rexar, it's a good idea to pick up the buff because it makes Rexar easier. Um, and so even if it's like not time efficient, it makes that a killable thing instead of unkillable. Um, you'll see here I've got Gift of the Titans procced. <laughs> stupid, that stupid jumping thing makes it so hard to, to cleanse these totems. Uh, kill this figment off. Figment, rather. Uh, those are the things that spawn on you. And you ooh, dropping some sanity. Uh, so I think it's now going to be time for me to use my second orb. Uh, you'll see I'm getting stuck under the bridge, losing some more sanity. Is this where it ends? No, it's not where it ends, but that was, that was, that's not uh, the best way. You can actually get under that bridge if you're a goblin, which is the... I played a goblin character my last run of Org Orgrimmar before this one, and I'd, I'd gotten under that bridge. That was why I thought I could run under there. Uh, but you cannot as anything taller than that. Uh, so Bremba's pretty annoying. She does hex you from time to time. 
Uh, so that can get you into trouble depending on what's going on. Uh, but the, one of the nice things about being hexed or, or losing control of your characters, you don't actually seem to lose sanity from standing in the... Like when, when the game moves you into the void zones you're leaving behind, if you're hexed or whatever, you often don't lose sanity, so that's nice. Uh, there's another blue vial. We know blue vial good. Uh, and so we pick that up for our sanity restore. Uh, identifying which the good vials are, I've probably gained something like 600 sanity at this point from just clicking on blue vials. So uh, it's really useful to check for those, and that's part of why checking that mob in the first hut is important. There's a similar mob in Stormwind that I'll show you about, and in the description of this video, I'll have a weak aura that you can use to help uh, optimize this for yourself so you don't have to look at a chart in the middle of your run. Uh, it's not one that I've been using myself, but it's a very good one that uh, other people have been using and that I learned about between recording this and releasing this. Um, so there's another pull there. Uh, this th These are mobs that you do have to pull. You can skip that patrolling pack on the bridge there uh, that you'll, you saw me walk around the side of. Uh, that's an optional pack, and optional packs are really not worth pulling. You don't get all that many mementos from optional packs, uh, and especially for your first couple five mask runs, you really don't want to think too much about mementos. You just want to optimize your chances of defeating the run uh, rather than trying to you know farm as many chests as you can. Uh, so here comes the hopelessness cast. Uh, I'm going to AMS... Oh, I'm not going to AMS, okay, because my AMS is on cooldown. It would be good, though, if I did, if I if <laughs> my AMS was available, if I hadn't used it before. Uh, you'll see we also skipped the two enemies before this guy, because those are also optional. Uh, but yeah, this is, an, this is a boss fight you have to be pretty careful about uh, when, when you have the jumping madness, because it can easily jump you into those waves, and those waves will drain, like, 200 sanity or whatever, and that can be, that's a lot of sanity to lose. Uh, but, defeated, uh, we get our treasure chest there, and we are now going towards Thrall. Uh, so we've got my orb. I've still got one orb available here, which is is nice. That was more than I expected to have left here. Uh, and that means I have a little bit of time to loot some chests. These chests in the tainted area, the, the first area of the zone, have very few mementos. They only have, you know, 50 or whatever. Uh, so it's not like the lost area chests, which have a huge amount of mementos. Uh, but it's still worth doing these if you have the time. I, I only loot these chests, though, if I have the time. I'm not gonna... I, I don't bother with them uh, if I don't have a lot of extra time. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here, I think I think I went and pulled some extra mobs so that I could try and farm a Gift of the Titans proc. I don't really recommend doing this. I, I should have just, like, I should have just pulled one of these or whatever and then walked it into Thrall's room. Uh, you'll see there's also a blue vial over there. This is all just me kind of, like, identifying that I have a bunch of extra time right now uh, and trying to, you know, min-max it a little bit. But uh, you'll see I immediately proc Gift of the Titans because it was off its internal cooldown or whatever. Uh, and now it's not even going to be active by the time I do get to Thrall, so... I uh, really did not accomplish anything with this uh, at all. It probably would have been better to just, yeah, not to just go straight to Thrall. And I, I just, I always feel bad activating an orb when I'm really high sanity. Because um, that, it just feels like it's inefficient. But at this point, I just, I'd finished the run with enough left over. Uh, that was fine. Uh, okay, so finish off this pack. And then I think, did I go, what did I do in this run? All right, I looted this vial. That's good, I guess. I don't know, I, I just have extra sanity at this point. I could do the mailbox. There's a mount I could get from the mailbox. I wonder if that's what I'm doing. Uh, there, can we see Gammon for a second there? Not sure if we, oh no, Gammon's not active on this run because the blacksmith was active, right? Uh, it's always one or the other for, there's one of two possible buffs are active in your starting area. And then a buff will be active in one, but not both of the two corrupted areas is how this works in both Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Uh, and I'll show you which the buffs are in the Stormwind run as well. Uh, that'll be coming out the next time Stormwind's about to be active, so uh, in about a week's time, I'll show you a five mask full clear of that run. That run. Okay, uh, so we're on to Thrall now. Uh, just going to use our Sanity Orb, click on our drums. These boars are pretty scary, but they're actually not that bad if you orb into Thrall. Uh, so it's really nice to have an orb going into Thrall, uh, because it means that you can just let these boars cast on you, and it's, it's not a problem, right? Uh, and there you'll see we actually proc Gift of the Titans from killing one of those boars. Not important, uh, not necessary, but was helpful. Would have probably been a good idea for me to save my Cyclotronic Blast to DPS through Thrall's shield, because uh, without that I probably just don't have the damage to get through his shield uh, without a lucky Twilight Devastation proc, but who knows, maybe I'll just proc Twilight Devastation. Uh, so yeah, here comes that Cries of the Void. One of the nice things about this ability is that it doesn't actually drain too much sanity if you don't DPS through it. You'll see there it took 45 of my sanity. Uh, not the end of the world, not something that scales insanely out of control uh, if you're unable to break that shield, but it can be a problem if you're low on sanity coming into the Thrall fight, which I was not, obviously. Uh, here, again, it's just it's just a question of being careful with your movement. Uh, hopelessness cast, again, you just gotta, you gotta go find that orb. Uh, you can AMS that, but you'll see I've already, I already used AMS at some point on this fight. Uh, I think to prevent some damage from something. I don't know. I don't know. I should, I should save it for hopelessness. That would be better. Um, because then you don't get silenced. 
Uh, and then Thrall, yeah, has all those extra abilities, but still a pretty easy boss fight. Uh, again, it's just a question of controlled movement, uh, not making sure making sure that you have space, making sure that you know where you're going to move, depending on which ability he casts next. Uh, and then the boss goes down, and that is five masks, uh, solo, rank 10 cloak, Stormwind, uh, on the Blood Death Knight. Again, it's a very geared Blood Death Knight. Uh, it has 100 corruption of Twilight Devastation, which is a lot. Uh, Twilight Devastation did a huge amount of my damage on this run. Uh, but I, the next video you'll see will be Stormwind with a Windwalker Monk with no Twilight Devastation. So uh, it's definitely doable with all kinds of different classes and specs. Uh, we, got a, we got very much rewarded for this run as well. You'll see that corrupted item there. Uh, let me see if I mouse over it. Yeah, 470 Gushing Wound Corruption. One of the reasons to do five mass clears is once a week you'll get a 470 from it. And then every run after that it'll drop by five item levels. Uh, but that can be that can be really nice. So you'll see there, 470 gushing wound, very valuable piece of gear, uh, and a huge amount of mementos in all these boxes as well. Uh, something like 2,300 base mementos plus all the extra ones that you get for doing the run uh, at, a, at like double the rate of a regular full clear. Uh, so, anyways, that's been my five mask Orgrimmar full clear. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll show you the talent tree that I use now uh, from the this. So this is what my talent tree looked like. Nope, okay, I didn't show you. Well, I had most <laughs> um, Well, I had most of the talents. I didn't have all of them. Uh, and <laughs> if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. And thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.